We know that. That's God's wisdom. There's one church, one head, one baptism. There's one God, one Father of us all. We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, or Pentecostal, or whatever, or Shield of Faith, or whatever it is. Uh, that's something that uh, man has brought in into the equation. But even when I was in the Baptist church, I considered myself one with the church universal. Everybody that's born again by the one Spirit of God are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Nail that down. That's very simple. It's all in the Word of God, okay? But certain local bodies... God has given local bodies the privilege to do certain things different, and that's okay. As long as we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and preach this word, the organization of the church can vary. In certain churches, you have uh, uh, a pastor and you have deacons. You don't have elders. You don't have other ministers. Uh, you could have uh, ministers in that local body that... that have not much to do with that local body. Now, others, uh, ministers, have many, much to do in other bodies. But, so it's, it's a mixture, okay? So when God called me to be a shepherd of the Shield of Faith, I went into the Scriptures, did a lot of study, and then I tried to get it set up, which was hard because people weren't used to body ministry. They were used to coming in, sitting down, get their hymn books, sing three uh, hymns, and I'm not being funny. Uh, we take up the offering, preach a half an hour sermon, it's 12 o'clock, time to go home. <clears throat> That's it. Now, how many agree with that? Let me see your hands. How many understand that? Raise your hand if you, you, you understand it. How many has been in church a long time? <laughs> Come on, I'm talking to somebody here tonight. And I, 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 I want to try to set some things straight to get people to understand how we function here at the Shield. And it's, it's not like a lot of different churches. In some areas, it, it is the same. And I'm not saying that we're better and they're worse. I'm not saying none of that. I just want us to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it and why I feel that the Lord has led me to sort of revive the saints for the work of the ministry. Because as I read the Word of God, the pastor is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, and he's not to do everything himself. So here at the Shield, you see how it all works. There are people that clean the building, there's people that cut the grass, people that, that operate the, all the different equipment that we have here. Uh, we have ministers that, we, we are so blessed to have such wonderful ministers and teachers here at the Shield. We got good teachers here at the Shield that know the Word of God. And I thank God for that. And we've got people that operate in the gift of helps. And everyone that I'm talking to tonight has got something to do in this body. And you're faithful in doing it. And you're going to get a lot of rewards one day. Now think if you were in another church and you didn't have anything to do when you went to heaven, how many rewards would you have? You wouldn't have many because you didn't do hardly anything in the church. You, 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 you paid pe professional people to come in. If I want to see this church building full of people, all I got to do is call up somebody like um, what we call generals out there, having to come in and preach in the place to be full like that. And the minute they left, it'd be empty like that. We, we want people to grow and mature. God wants his children to grow and mature. <clears throat> Not just come to church because some great man of God is there. And that's good. And I'm not kicking that. And we need to, and I, and I invite you when there's revivals, go, go, but come back and continue your work here. So, we need to understand that if you read this and go through the scriptures. Now look at your, uh, your, your little picture there of, of the church. Notice Jesus Christ is the head. All right. And then you have your apostles, 
pastors and your prophets and your evangelists. So it operates, it comes down. Authority always comes down. It does not go up. It comes down from the head and it filterates to all the different parts of the body. That's why if you're in your place, you will receive your degree of anointing. You will receive your degree of authority. But if you step out of your lane, if you step out of your calling, if you step out of your uh, area of responsibility and start meddling in another area, which is not your area, you're going to mess up. And you're going to mess everybody up. How many understand what I'm saying? Okay. Because we want to see the anointing flow. The anointing comes down. When Aaron, when, when Aaron was anointed, it started from his head. When David was anointed, it would come from his head all the way down to, the, to his vesture, right on down. Right on down to the feet. So if you're in your position and you operate in your given area of responsibility, you will receive that degree of anointing to operate in that area that you are responsible to operate in. Now, how many understand what I'm saying? All right, now, see, this is something that many people don't understand. So God puts the body together, and we're going to get into the Scriptures directly. All right, look what we're saying there now. The church is not an organization. It has organization, but it is not an organization. It is a living organism with every member operating all together as one body. <coughs> now get that picture. Ain't one part pulling against the other part. If you look at your your body, if you have one area that is rebelling, that's got pain in it, you, you, you talk to uh, Linda there. She's been handicapped because of that one hand. Anybody ever been handicapped by one part of your body not operating and functioning as it should? Come on, all of us have. If you notice tonight, who took care of the problem? I gave it to Frank. Frank took care of the problem. Everything's okay. Because see, that's his anointing. That is, well, he's got anointing for many things. But that is an area that he knows electricity. He knows how to do that. Rick knows how to do that. So, my goodness, I'm not going to stake my, my hand in no wires. That's a, good, that's a good thing to remember. Now, don't stick your hand in somebody else's business. You might get it bit off or electricity might pow. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen people. And sometimes we, we overstep our boundaries, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in your lane and, and you're over there ground at me. What are you ground at, you know? Hey, you trying to take over the whole place? How many of you understand what I'm saying? Come on, church, smile at me or do something. Don't throw that brick. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty of living because we have to understand these things because the body needs to function in love. Love is a key word. All right, so you have your arms, teachers. Notice teachers, the arms. Your heart is the evangelistic. The evangelist is that heart, souls, loving souls. Now, all of us have the ministry of reconciliation. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, 17, 18, right in there, it talks about all of us having that ministry of reconciliation. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm believing and trusting for souls. My heart is full uh, of, of wanting to see people come to know the Lord and get saved. Because I know there's a hell, and once you get into hell, you ain't coming out. I believe this word, so I do everything. Now, I don't go around sad and cry about it all the time. I have in my day, but I, I try to be happy, uplifted. When you come around me, you, 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 you know, you, you, you're, you're meeting the power of God because the power of God is in me. The power of God is in you. So I'm going to be happy, smiling, because I am happy and smiling because of Jesus. 
So we all need to be that living epistle read by all men. Everybody say, I am a living epistle read by all men. All right, now, so we have to keep that uh, as we walk along in life. All right, now look at this. Down in the middle, you have, you have on, the, on your... Uh, on the right-hand side of this uh, image, you have the church body. Everybody see that? All right, members flowing, uh, members flowing and fighting at each other. Talking about one another, gossiping about another, uh, trying to overthrow the preacher. <laughs> huh? You don't think that don't happen? Huh? Come on, we've been around long. Haven't we been around long time? We know. Yeah. All right. No members flowing together in the Holy Spirit, ministering to the saints and to the lost. So when we come together, we're all Christians here. We're ministering. We're teaching the saints tonight. We worship the Lord. The body is a channel for God to flow to the church and the world. Let's say that again. The, our, the body of the church, the body is a channel. We are a channel for God to flow to the church and the world. Balance is a key word. Now, habitation is better than visitation. It's wonderful to have a visitation of the Lord. We have them. We had one Sunday. We have them every once in a while. But habitation, in other words, he doesn't visit us every once in a while. We flow in such a way that he just says, I got to live with them folks. <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, they flow in me. I, tell, I don't want to go nowhere else. I want to stay here and live with these folks. They love me and I love them and we're having a big time together. You see that? Okay. Now. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, but we as the body of Christ, every member has a responsibility for some things in the body. Are everybody understand what I'm saying there? Everybody has a area of responsibility that they have to be faithful in. Now, I am an example. Everybody look at me. I am an example. Now, I'm going to turn the page. Are you an example? Yes. Play like I didn't hear that. <clears throat> Just went right over your head. <laughs> you know, I could milk that, you know. <laughs> oh, but I, I want to keep this in an edifying way tonight. All right, so you're an example. Yeah, you're here on time. You're ready to pray. You're ready to serve. You're loving the saints. You don't, you don't talk about nobody, but you pray for everybody. Anybody hear the Lord out there tonight? <laughs> now, I know that you're all pretty well straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty straight, okay. <clears throat> all right, notice the legs, help the legs, the governing feet. Elders, spiritual matters. Now, elders usually take care of spiritual matters. Elders can teach, preach. Uh, they can uh, minister, counsel. Deacons are material matters. They're servants. Okay? Now, we are so blessed. Our deacons can teach. They can, they can counsel. They can minister. They can do the natural work. They can do just about everything. So I just thank God that, uh, that, that and, uh, and many of you are the same way. Now, some of us can do things better. That's okay. It's okay. I said it. Yes, Justine can make better cake than Brother Bob. Come on, let's tell it like it is. Come on now, church. Give me some shouting in this place tonight. Woo! Huh? Who would eat a piece of my cake? I bet it would be burnt and it would, yeah. <laughs> you, when you looked at it, you want to. 
Come on, church. Tell it like, some of us can do better things than others. And that's great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. We have somebody in the house can cast out demons. <laughs> How many times I've seen people get all bent out of shape because somebody else can do better than, something better than them. Well, move over and let them do it. Now, Bob, don't go preaching and meddling. I'm trying not to. Now, <clears throat> all right. Listen to this. Now, I'm going to shock some of you tonight, but you got to learn. Because if we're going to move forward, if we're, we're talking about revival, we're talking about habitation of God in our midst. And everybody has a part in being willing to do whatever it takes for God to move. Didn't hear one amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, wonder, good, that's wonderful. Uh, that's what I want to hear. I mean, we might even have to, on a Sunday, we might even, uh, you know, we used to be able, we didn't leave the place to four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I remember one time I, we had a tremendous visitation of God and some, one guy laid out on, on, it was laid out through the whole service and we all turned out the lights and uh, went home and I was over there and I looked out there and it must have been five o'clock in the afternoon. He opens the door and goes out and gets his car and drives home. <laughs> he, he laid, I mean, God put him out, but good. So listen, just remember if you're the last one in the building, make sure the air conditions are cut off, the lights are cut off, lock the door and go home. I mean, when God starts moving, you're going to see things different. Yes. Amen? Amen? All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me read this. God is bringing forth a church in the Godhead. When the church is conformed in unity, then the glory of God will fill the place. Mm. This is something in all of our grasp. We can walk in unity. Because when God sees the unity, what, is the, what does it say? God will what? Command what? The Command what? The Command the what? The yeah, you got it. Command the blessing. So what does it mean to walk in unity? Love one another. I might not agree with you. That's fine. I don't expect you to agree with everything I say. But don't burn the house down because you don't agree with me. Remember, keeping the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace is every person's responsibility. Sometimes we, we, we do our work just perfect. But our attitude stinks. Now, you know I'm telling truth. How many has ever had a stinking attitude besides me? <laughs> but we ain't going to do that no more. See, we're learning, we're maturing, we're growing up. We prefer our brother over ourselves. Men, we prefer our wives over ourselves. I didn't hear one amen out of the women. Not one. Are you all out there? Oh, I see you now. Men, we prefer our wives over ourselves. Amen. Oh, I love to hear those amens. And vice versa. See, see, that's Christianity. People don't even know what Christianity is. It's, it's selfishness. It's me. I'm first. I got to be it on the stake. If I'm not it on the stake, I ain't going to pray no more. Did I say pray or play? <laughs> Both. You won't pray and you won't play. Come on, church. Shout me down if you can. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I tell you, I know the church... Uh, I've been around too long, R.W. Okay, here we go. 
Now, unity. Everybody say unity. unity. All right. Fellowship is so important. Now, listen and listen carefully. The Greek word for fellowship is to share together. Partnership. The Greek word for fellowship is to share together fellowship established by a covenant contract or relationship. How many of you know we're all in a contract? We're all in a covenant. Yes. Very important. When you study, and I'm with the men, we're talking about covenant, teaching on covenant. And that's important. If you hurt, I hurt. That's what covenant is all about, taking care of one another. Now listen to this. The enjoyment and growth in fellowship with God. All right, let's catch it again. The enjoyment and growth in fellowship with God. As we fellowship with God, with there's enjoyment there, there's growth in that. Is in direct proportion to our fellowship with the brothers and sisters. I got to be honest. I got to preach the gospel. If we don't love one another, if we don't treat each other right, God don't like that. How many in here would like one of your children? If you don't say you've got two kids and one of them is picking on the other one all the time and talking about the other one in a negative way all the time, what would you do as a parent? How many would take care of that? Let's see your hands. Right there, huh? Huh? How many wouldn't do it? How many is listening to me? Good. Hallelujah. See, we got to bring this thing down. So we, listen, this is so important because I'm going to give you a scripture. I'm going to give you a scripture now. Turn, put it on the board. Uh, 1 John 1, 7. Now we've been talking about 1 John 1, 9 because most of the folks needed that. Now I think we pretty well grounded in that. Now let's back up a little bit to 7. First John, now notice, but if, see that little word if? If we really are living and walking in the light. All right, let's, let's answer the question. Are we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we? Yes. Didn't hear you. Yes. I love it. Good. You got to know that. Because if you ain't, you better change. Is that right? Come on, you know I love you. I love myself. I'm talking to myself too. Now, but if we really are living and walking in the light. See, there's a benefit here now. I want you to see the benefit. As he himself is in the light. Now, that doesn't mean that all your, all your T's are going to be crossed and, and you might miss putting a period at the end of a question like me, or you might end up putting a question, not putting a question mark and putting a period when you should have put, that, that, that ain't what we're talking about. That's just human elements. That's just a human nature. Uh, you might slip and say, doggone it, or something like that, or <clears throat> we ain't talking about that, but your heart. God looks at the heart is in the light as he is in the light. Notice, notice now what happens. We have true unbroken fellowship with who? With one another. Now there's another benefit coming up directly. Just, just meditate on that. What is the result of us walking in the light? We will have what? Fellowship one with another. If we don't have fellowship one with another, one of us is not walking in the light. Mm. Preach it, Bob, believe it will. Because yes, <laughs> this is important. We've come to church to hear the truth. The tooth and nothing but the tooth. <laughs> Behave yourself. You're pushing me on that. <laughs> Lord, he, God knows my heart. <laughs> but see, we got to see this is very important. You can burn the toast and that's okay. But don't 
Make sure you are fellowshipping with the saints. Because I'm going to tell you why. Okay? Very important. All right, let's go on and, and, and say we got to stop and, and break down these scriptures. We've been saying them for years and don't even know what we're talking about. Good preaching, Bob. What'd you learn? Well, mm, I, I'm this good. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Look what it says. We'll have, tr is in delight. We have true and unbroken fellowship with one another. Now, let's be honest. Anybody in this fellowship that you don't have real good fellowship with? Well, I'm your shepherd. I pretty well know. <laughs> oh, he's there. He's putting me on the spot. I ain't mentioning no names. What are you looking at me for? I'm looking at everybody. How about your next door neighbor? Now, there's a balance on all of this. He might not be a Christian. How can you have fellowship with, the, with darkness? We understand all of that. But listen, we're talking about in the body of Christ, if that unity is not there, don't expect God to bless us too much. Oh, he'll bless us some because he loves us. But we're talking about a real move of God. Everybody's at the altar, even the preacher. <laughs> the deacons, the elders, the ministers. The baby in the crib is crawling down to the altar. <laughs> A purification taking place. All right, now look, now this is within our means. We've got to have this knowledge. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, what will be the result of that? We will have fellowship one with another. And if you're not having fellowship with somebody, the chances are you're probably talking about them instead of praying for them. Here's what you've got to understand. When you talk about some brother in the assembly, you are damaging your own spirit. Many of you have experienced it. I have. Way back in, that's why I know these things. God's brought me out of darkness. How many seen the, you know, on TV this football player and this guy bumped into, I forget who bumped into one another, but the end of it was one guy shot the other guy. How many have seen that on TV? How many know the scripture in 1 Peter 1, 3, verse 8 and 9? Do not render evil for evil. Now that's an example of rendering evil for evil. You bump in my car? All right, come and bump in my car. And this, is, this is here. All right, you, you bump into my car there. Boom, boom, boom. Look at all the trouble I am in now. If he's not a Christian, he'd be in hell. I just sent him to hell. If he's a Christian, I sent him home. But what kind of a... Look at me. I'm in bad shape. The guy... Just one little anger. Anger does not work at the righteousness of God. Be angry, but sin not. That guy was angry, pulled out his gun, pow, shot him. This is going on in our society right now all over the world. Yes. So my advice to you, watch out who you're bumping into. Yes. <laughs> I can tell you stories about people in the church. They bump into each other sometimes. Whew. The whole church is just, ah. I mean, understand what I'm talking about? All right, I know I'm talking about adult saints in here tonight. See, God's word is so true. He knows if you do this, a result is going to happen. 
If you do this in obedience and what God's word says, a good result. But if you do this in a bad area, a bad result. See, that's just the way the word of God is set up. We must understand that. It ain't God just doing it. No, it's all been organized from the beginning of time that these laws have been put in place and if you break them you in trouble. We are in trouble. It's very simple. It's not complicated. But yet there's a lot of people just cannot understand that. They think they can talk about somebody and not hurt themselves. I'll show you in the Bible why many of them have prematurely died. Are you listening? Do you know the word of God? Can anybody show me in the scripture where they didn't, they didn't do right and, and, and prematurely died? Many of them were sickly. How many know I'm teaching the, preaching the truth? How many don't know? You better read your Bible. See, those things make me walk straight. Hello? Yes. You ain't going to get away with it. Whatever you sow, whatever I sow, Good or bad, you're going to reap. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, this ain't about condemnation. This is about, wow, now you can help people. See, son, the reason that you don't want to do this, because, this, see, you're planting a seed, and that seed will germinate, and that seed will produce misery, hatred, unforgiveness. Y you see? Somebody say amen. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, you got it. Now, listen to this. Go back to that scripture. All right. Now, notice what happens. When you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have unbroken uh, fellowship with one another. And what else? What else do you have? And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. Woo! What a reward! Do you see it? Do you see it? Now that's how we're to walk. And the blood will automatically cleanse us. But it, it's based on our willingness to love one another and walk in fellowship. It doesn't mean we're going to agree with everybody and what everybody does. But we don't go over here and say, brr, 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 or a beep, 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 because you are inviting trouble in your own life when you do that because you're sowing evil for good. Boy, I never heard teaching like this of you. Huh? It's about time now we, we want to move on, don't we? We want to see revival. How many want to see revival? How many, how many is willing to pay the price? All right, we got all that. Got you. How many is willing to pay the price? I just want to see every hand go up. I need a couple hours. I don't think you could take it, could you? All right. Now, when you, when you look at that scripture, find out about that. That's good. Now, let's listen to this. One of the signs of maturity or lack of spiritual growth is lack of fellowship. Because when two immature... Uh, brothers, come together. Would you stand up again? Let's say we're both immature. <coughs> Rubby, w, 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 w. I ain't gonna mess with him no more. <laughs> Did you hear what I got said? <laughs> now that's immaturity. If you, how many's read the Bible? Am I the only one who read the Bible? Some of you read the Bible. You ain't read the part I've read, did you? I can tell you, boo. I could, mm, I won't talk about that though. <clears throat> mm. That's why some of you are prematurely dying. Someone said, well, I ain't going to that church, just a bunch of hypocrites. I said, well, come on and join us. You, there'll be another one. Listen, there ain't nobody in here perfect but me. You know that. <laughs> Why do you think I'm perfect? <laughs> See, that's part of your maturity when you can put up with a brother or a sister that's not immature. 
All right. All right, Bonnie, here we go. Turn to uh, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 1. Let's get this message going. Woo! All right. Romans chapter 15, verse 1, 2, and 3. But start with 1. Here we go. Hallelujah. All right. We who are strong in our convictions and robust faith. We. Who's we? We got any we's in here? Uh, we, we. That's us. Okay. Now you might be the other. You know. What, uh, let's see who we is. We. We will say right now. It's, that's us. Who are strong in our convictions and of robust faith are to what? Bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. Are you kidding? Yeah. All right, let's see who we have in here that's strong in their conviction. Raise your hands. Strong in your convictions. All right. All right, everybody's strong. So what, what's your job in the future? Go, we're going to have people come in here and they, 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 they is as frail... As you used to be. You know, you know what you got to do? Tell me what you got to do. Read the Bible. What's that little one word, four letter word up there? Bear. bear. That's the bearings of the church. You bear. Bob, what am I going to do about this? Bear. Everybody say bear. bear. How many got children in here? How many's ever bared? And then bear it again. Remember the word bear. Because you're strong in your conviction. So we bear with the failings. Son, if I told you once, I've told you a thousand times. That ain't the way we do it around here. And the Lord said, Bob, yes, Lord, bear. Oh, okay. You bear, because only God can change that next person. In fact, only God can change you and me. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know the Lord is buried with us? Just give the Lord a hand. Go ahead, praise Him. Oh, thank you for buried with us, God. Oh, Lord, you didn't throw us off the boat when we weren't lined up like we should have. Thank you, Jesus. Bear, bear, bear. You go to bed tonight, bear. <laughs> bear with that husband, bear with that wife, bear with those kids, bear with that dog out there that's barking and I can't go to sleep. I'll take care of that right now. Did he scare that? How many ever had a dog? Next door to you, and just and you and you work at night and try to sleep in the daytime. Huh? Oh my goodness! What is Dad doing? He's down there loading his gun. Dale, now don't you do that, my dad? Don't put that gun away now, Dale. That dog is just that's just hit that dog. You know, you got to bear with him. I'll bear with him. Where's he? At? There he is. Boom. Where's that? He's down at the county jail. <laughs> you see, he didn't know that scripture in First Peter. Uh, uh, what is it? First Peter uh, one uh, three, chapter three, verse eight and nine. Okay, now here we go. See, there's a result. Bearing, I'd rather bear than end up in jail. So you got to count the costs. You just have to bear with people. And love them. All right. Now, notice this. Bear with the failings, the frailties. Anybody in here have a frailty? Huh? And the tender scruples. What is scruples? Tell us what scruples are. I got it written down, but I can't remember right now. It's uh, what? 
Huh? The mind has to do with the mind, okay. And tender scruple of the weak. There are certain people, let me tell you something, and I've learned this a long time, you just got to love. Yes. They do everything wrong, you just got to love them. Yes. Only God can do to change them. Because after all, only God changed me. <laughs> only God can change them. I'll show you a scripture on that directly. We are to help carry the doubts and the squirms and the worms. Oh, I'm sorry. Squirms of others. I just can't say that next few words. What's those next words, son? And not to please ourselves. Not to, pl not to please myself? Lord! Folks, that's real Christianity in operation when you live to please others. But you say, <laughs> listen, when you really know who you are in God, when you're secure in God, you know it's his desire to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is ours. You don't have to squirm around him. And, you know, God will take care of you when you walk according to the scriptures. I've found that out many a times. That's what I like about that, uh, that picture that we saw last Friday night. How many were there last Friday night? All right. This particular one guy, the other two guys was haunting this one guy that came in to order the hamburger. It was late at night. And, and this one guy was giving this Christian man, I mean, he was really, you know, the Christian didn't notice he didn't say a thing. Didn't say anything. But he got up and shared some things. And then he went to the guy that owned the place and paid for his meal. And, and he paid for the other guy's meal and walked out. They come up and say, okay, what I owe you? Nothing. No, I got to owe you something. We owe you whatever. You no, Jesus paid the price. See, when you get security, God... Oh, Charlie, when you get secure in God, oh, you get free. You get free in your life. All oh, this little inky, dinky, dinky, dookie, hockey, bookie, dinky stuff ain't worth out I mean, you're free. Are you listening? Some of you don't know what to make of that, do you? Some of you do. You know what I'm, I'm telling the truth. Some people are just worried about, worried about what? Ain't worried about, Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Make your hair fall out. Don't worry about anything. You can't do it on your own power. You've got to connect it to the power source. That's right, Pastor. Say, you can have a fan here. It won't run. When you hook up to the, when you hook up to the power source, it'll start spinning. Now, if you ain't hooked up to it, I, I don't know what I can do to, to help you get hooked up to it. You're just going to have to get into the Word of God. You're going to have to get in your closet. You're going to have to talk with God. You're going to have to say, God, I want to get hooked up to you, the source of all life. Yes. And there's a lot of people in the church need to get really vicious in this thing and get hooked up to the source. And quit all this hanky, panky, dinky, danky, dunky, good for nothing stuff. And get hooked up to the source and your whole life changes. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Somebody curse you out and you look at them and smile. If you don't have no teeth, don't worry about it. Just smile anyway. <laughs> Just give them a gum, a gum treatment. <laughs> See, you, if, you don't, if you're not walking in this, you don't know what I'm talking about. Right. But I believe most of you are walking in this. Some of you got a little adjustment to make, and I know who you are too. I got your name written right here behind my Bible. <laughs> All right. Let's read that again. We who are strong in our conviction and of robust faith are to bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples and, and of the weak. 
We are to help carry the doubts. Now let's move to the next verse real quick. Number two, verse two. All right, here we go. Let each one of us make it a practice to please and make everybody else in the church miserable. Oh, I'm sorry. Let each one, see, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's you. That's me. Make it a practice. Say, make it a practice. To please make happy his neighbor for his good and for his true welfare, to edify him, to strengthen him, and build him up spiritually. Now, you just keep looking at that word. Let that get into your soul. Now, we're talking about revival here. Now, I tell you, this church is a long ways. I mean, most of you do a great job. But see, you've got to know this to help others that come in. That they're weak. They got their dress up to their... Well... Fanny. <laughs> You're just going to have to bear with it until the Word of God to get in there and... Huh? Now that's a job for some of you women. You got to do it in love, though. See, I'm going to take up a collection and buy you some more material for that dress. <laughs> hey, I, please don't tell my family this. But I tell you, I have to wrestle with my grandkids on this. I mean, well, let's don't go that way. <laughs> I'm in enough trouble as it is. <clears throat> but they got a heart that loved Jesus. <laughs> See, I have, to, I have to bear with that. All right. Now, listen to this. Let's go to the next verse. Okay, boy, that's a powerful, that's number two. Verse three, then we'll go, got somewhere else to go. I got five more minutes, I'll let you go. For Christ did not please himself. For Christ did not please himself. Gave no thought to his own interests. Whew. But as it is written, the reproaches and abuse of those who reproached and abused you fell on me or fell on him. Every time somebody abuses us or, or rebukes or whatever, he's already taken it for us. He took it for us. So therefore we should take it for others too. I don't have to be the star. Because I'm already the star in God's eyes. He's so loved. See, you've got to see that. Because as long as you're insecure, you're going to fight for your rights. What you think is your rights. And here's our rights. Don't live for yourself, but live for him who died for you. That's our rights. How many of you know life comes out of death? So you got to understand that. Can you imagine you planted a garden? I know we got some gardeners in here. But nothing ever comes up. You're never able to eat the corn. You're never able to pick the beans of the okra. You know why? Because the seed didn't die. But if it dies... Woo! We're going to have some beans tonight for supper. Woo! And until we are willing to die, we'll never understand life. For life comes out of death. God is so gracious that he don't take us up in these bodies. You ought to give the Lord a praise for that. Thank God. They can just quit breathing and we out of here. That's God's wisdom. 
God's wisdom. Listen to this. Fellowship. Fellowship is a place for God's protection. You're protected here. Because if you didn't hear this message, probably people would, or remember this goes on tape. They'll go on living like they have been living for themselves and wonder why there ain't no life in Christianity. Because ain't nobody dying to their old ways. <laughs> That's right. Don't shout me down out there, please. I can't hear you when you shout that, that much. <laughs> Fellowship is a place for God's protection. Fellowship is a place for developing our ministry. Fellowship with one another cleanses you with the blood of Christ. And that's found in 1 John 1, what? Seven. Seven. Now, you go to verse 8. If you are sinning, and you say you're not sinning, you're lying, the truth is not in you. But if you are sinning, fall right down to John, 1 John 1, 9, and confess it before the Lord, and God is what? Faithful? To hit you over the head. No. no. He is faithful and just to cleanse you, forgive you, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now you're back on the road. And I want to uh, practice my message tonight. If I offended anybody in this congregation... Will you not forgive me? I mean, will you forgive me? I'm just checking to see if you're alive. Yes, sir. We forgive you, Pastor. That's right. Thank you so much. Because, see, that's how you get free. Forgiving others is not so much for them, it's for you and for me. How many understand that? You must understand that. Whatever you have to do. I went to my oldest daughter and I sat down in her chair in her house years ago and I said, honey, I want you to forgive me because I knew nothing about raising children. How many here knew anything about raising children when you first got married? You know, you didn't want any, but they just kept showing up. And you found out what the cause and you sort of slowed down a little bit. <laughs> and she said, Daddy, I forgive you. But let me even know, I needed that to clear yourself. You will never be clear. Now listen to your pastor. You're going to have to let your pride drown and go to that person and get it clear for yourself. Well, if you want to be miserable all your life, and you will be. I'm telling you, you will be. You notice when people come up here, what do I do? First thing, forgive me. Do you forgive your daddy, your mama, your sister, your brothers? Forgive myself. You got to forgive. Missy has a sign back there. I noticed that sign. How many can tell me what that sign is about forgiveness? You see it every time when you're back there and you don't know. What does it say? Forgiveness is not an option. What? You read it the next time you go back there. Because see, if, 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 we, if, we, if we want revival, we got to be clear to receive the power. Amen. Repentance must first start at the house of God. Yes, sir. See, we're preparing ourselves now. This brother has got it on his heart. He stared my heart. He stared in yours. But we got to make preparations and then when God does move, be willing to move with him as a team, as every member functioning in his place, in his place. Amen. Amen. And then we'll see the unity and God will command the blessing. Boom! Amen. It won't be a visitation. It'll be a habitation. I want to dwell with those people. How many in here likes to dwell with people that live in peace? Have you ever been to anybody's house where there ain't no peace in that house? You want to get out of that house as quick as you can. Yes, 
But I love to be around brothers and sisters that, that I don't have to cross every T and dot every I without being told about it. Somebody say, ouch. ouch. I thought I hit the right spot. There. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's pray. Time's running out. Lord, thank you for the word of God tonight. And Lord, you've talked to our hearts. Now it's up to get us to get along with you and just make everything right. Clear the past that you might pour into blessings in the future. And we want to thank you now for each one here. And we love each one. And we thank you for each one. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.